What's up, everybody? It's the Spencers, and we're back with Naked and Unashamed. Babe, are you excited about this topic tonight? I'm so excited about this topic tonight. It's, it's a secret. It's a secret. Ancient American secret. No, <laughs> it is a secret about how to make love last, a secret to making romance last. Do y'all remember when you first started dating? When you fell in love, couldn't get you off the phone, you were on the phone breathing, couldn't wait to see the other person that gave you butterflies. Oh my. You went out on dates, mm -hmm. talked all night. What happened? What happened to you? You got married. And then the fire started going down. It, it's not supposed mm -hmm. to do that. You're supposed to keep love alive. And we tonight want to share with you the secrets of making romance last. And we'll tell you when we get back. We made it through the test. Strength and need love and sex. All right. Ooh, my secret. You remember New Dish, you sang that? Did you get it yet? Get it yet? Oh, get okay. It, get yes, it, I get, 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 get it. 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 Yeah, you know, that, that's my boys. We're going to see them in Las Vegas uh, this summer. I can't wait. But tonight, we're talking about the secret to making romance last. And I was reading an article the other day, sweetheart, and they were talking about the secret to making romance last is doing new things together. I agree. I thought that was so profound yeah. because they took it all the way back to when, you st when we were dating in college, mm -hmm. what that was like. But there were some alarming statistics before we jump into that. There were some alarming statistics that says that 13% of all first marriages end in divorce. Wow. And then another 30% of those marriages end after 20 years. After 20 years. And then of course we mentioned this statistic before that 50% of Americans are getting divorced and that is the same for people that are in church and out, and out of church. Mm -hmm. There's a problem Houston and the problem is, is that people are not figuring out how to stay together. It's easy to fall in love, mm. but how do you stay in love? And I've often said this, sweetheart, that the love is not a hole. No. Nope. It, it's, not, it's not something you fall into. It's something you work on. And you're going to get out of it whatever you put into it. And so we want to teach you how to make your romance last forever. There were some... Um, there was some research in this article I was reading about people keeping romance alive. And you mentioned it earlier when we were talking off camera on how um, young people were very romantic in their early years. Can you go back in time when we were in college? What was different about our romance then versus now? Well, let me go way back to senior year in high school. Okay. So you remember when you would, you're, you're getting ready to graduate high school. You're excited about going to college, but you made a list of things you were leaving behind and things you wanted to gain. You did that. I, well, most high schools did that. <laughs> Our high schools did Ours that. Ours didn't. So well, tell, tell me what y'all did at okay. Moore High School. Well, what we did at Moore High School, <laughs> we had a list of things, what we were leaving behind for the classes behind us, okay. and then what we were looking forward to when we went off to college. And I remember one of my things that I mentioned that I wanted to go to college to find the man of my dreams. Mm, imagine that. Did you do that? I did. Yeah. Where's he at? Right here. Oh, right here, hey, right how y'all doing? Right here. So <laughs> it was very encouraging to know that I was right in the statistics for this article that we're talking about because it was saying first and second year college students are wide eyed, bushy tail, and more in tune with falling in love. Wow. You know, because it's, it's new experiences, new faces, new people outside of who you've been with for the last, you know, four years in high school. A whole new world has opened up going into college. So, meaning it was a large number of freshmen and sophomore who were so they were more eager to fall in love than our upperclassmen. You know, I was. Um... We went to go see the Planet of the Apes uh, the other night, The Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, new movie that came out. And there's one particular scene where the apes discover this abandoned planetarium 
and they're looking through this gigantic telescope, mm -hmm. and they're just, oh, oh, they're in awe. And I said, babe, do you remember our first date? Oh, was at the planetarium. Planetarium. It was a planetarium? Planetarium. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Where you go look at the stars. Where you look at the stars. So we went in there. That was our first date, one of our first dates that Rhonda and I went on, and we were both just uh, mesmerized. It was romantic. It was informative. It was a new experience. Mm -hmm. And, and I can say, I never did that with another woman. <laughs> it was, you're the only woman I ever went oh, and saw the stars with. But, but that's the kind of stuff that began to lay the foundation for our long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. We were having new experiences. I think we both um, flew together. Uh, for one of our few times that we had flown, we flew to Dallas for spring break. Um, together. You remember that? I do, I do. Uh, so we, we've been building upon that. And I think the point we're trying to make to you that marriages that find ways to continue to experience self-expansion mm -hmm. uh, continue to strengthen those relationships. Self-expansion is when you get outside of your comfort zone, get so outside of yourself, and you learn to do something new. As couples, it's so important to do that. They said in this research, babe, that that couples who found a way to continue to, to do self-expansion, to learn new ways of doing things together, uh, were less likely to experience infidelity. Why do you think it is that couples who learn to do new stuff together are less likely to cheat on each other? Well, I would think that when you're doing new things with your spouse on a regular basis, that curbs that possible temptation of doing something new with someone that's not your spouse. Mm, I like that. So like if you're cont every week, if you're spending time together, exploring, doing different things together, that helps with that. It, it makes you feel like you're in a new relationship. Yes, exactly. Because you're doing new stuff. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get bored doing the same thing over and over and right. over again. What brings new life into your relationship is when you discover new things to do together and you're less likely to be intrigued about new pictures. You know, you're strolling through social media. Oh, they look they look nice. Try doing new things together as a couple. Try new outfits. Try new hairstyles. Try new restaurants. Try new activities because that's going to make it feel like you're dating somebody new. Uh, it keeps the marriage fresh. Another thing they discovered uh, with couples who do new things is they asked the question, um, how often do you and your spouse do new things together? How much does being with your partner result in you having new experiences? And how much do you see your partner as a way to expand your own capabilities? Partners who respond favorably are consistently less t tempted by infidelity. And then they said in one randomized controlled trial published in the journal Couple and Family Psychology in 2013, researchers at the University of New England and Australia encouraged 50 couples to try new activities, watch this, together for at least 90 minutes a week over four weeks. And without any other relationship counseling, this intervention significantly increased feelings of romantic satisfaction between partners compared with a con control group that went without this advice. Interesting. Yeah. They challenged them to do something new 90 minutes a week for four weeks, and they improved without any other counseling. Let's pick that apart a little okay. bit. Can you imagine 90 minutes a week we do something new and that creates more excitement as a couple. Why do you think that works 90 minutes a week for four weeks? Well, because we as human beings, we have a very short attention span and sometimes we can get so overwhelmed with doing things and so having an hour and a half of a new experience not only piques your interest it keeps you locked into that particular activity because typically what do married couples spend a lot of time doing and talking about on a week-to-week -week basis oh bills <laughs> children who's doing what um money 
all the things that can break up a marriage, that's the things they that we... They communicate about things they have to communicate. Right, you exactly. Know, the details of who's going to do what, mm -hmm. but not really embracing new activities mm -mm. outside of the rudimentary right. activities that they are stuck in on a weekly basis. But 90 minutes, y'all need to try that. An hour and a half. I want to give you a challenge. I think that every couple that's listening, you should try that. Do something new together, 90 minutes a week, for four weeks and see if it doesn't take your romance to the next level. It, it showed that that people who did something new 90 minutes a week for four weeks, it also helped them in the bedroom. Mm, okay. They, they started having more sexual desire for one another. Um, nobody wants the same old, same old all the time. Mm -mm. You know, you got to figure out new ways of approaching each other, but before you can be aroused sexually, you got to be aroused intellectually. Absolutely. You got to be aroused socially. Mm -hmm. And to go to new places and try new things, it's a turn on. Yes. You know, I, sometimes when we go out and you dress up and you put on your perfume, you got on a, a tight fitting dress and, you know, your, your perfume is smelling sweet and, and, you know, you come stepping out of the house. I'm like, yeah, that's mine. You know what I mean? I take you out and I see other people, you know, turning their heads. Like, uh-huh, she's mine. What, what, what is, what's up? And so I think that get, it, it boosts my self-esteem as a man to be like, I have such a beautiful mm -hmm. wife. I hope you feel the same about it. Oh, that. I do, of course. <laughs> but it's just not when we're getting ready to go out. It's a day-to-day, -day, you know, keeping your appearance up, making sure that you're doing your manis, your patties, getting your hair done, getting your eyebrows done, making sure that everything is in order so that we can stay attractive for, uh, to each other. Now, I, I felt something when she said everything is in order. My wife tends to <laughs> be shy when it comes to talking about, uh, it, even though she's a, a sex doula uh, and been educated in sexual education, she tends to still gloss. What do you mean you say everything is in order? What well, we're mean? gonna keep everything tight, you know, okay, making sure everything. that you're you're working out, making sure that oh. you're you're smelling good, that oh. you're and that you taste good, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> This one right here. Um, did you know there's also some health benefits hmm. to doing things new? Okay. I want to I want to read this from this article. It says relationships that offer opportunities for personal growth can also improve our health by buffering the effects of stress. In a survey of nearly 400 Americans published in the journal Personal Relationships, Sarah Stanton at the University of Edinburgh. Edinburgh found that people who believed their romantic relationship would lead them to gain more insights, experiences, and or knowledge from my partner were significantly less likely to report a range of physical symptoms such as stomach problems, dizziness, skin rashes, and colds. That's interesting. Doing new stuff with your partner boosts your immune system. Mm. It helps you to stay healthy. Stress is a silent killer. And good God, we talked about this uh, not long ago. We, we, let's say we have this friend. Uh -huh. We have this friend who is stuck in a miserable marriage. Okay. They don't do anything. They don't go anywhere. They're stuck out in this remote country rural house. And the symptoms are showing up through sickness. This person is not feeling well. They're having to go to the hospital a lot. And we both concluded that they lack what? They lack the uh, the accountability of doing new things, yes. experiencing new things. They're just stuck in the They're same. They're stuck in a cycle. There's no family. There's no friends. There's there's nothing really to do. They just stay in this house, and one of the spouses is getting sick. But really, both of them have been sick, mm -hmm. and it's because you, there's a lack of new experiences. And I'm telling you all that in order to stay healthy, in order for your relationship to stay healthy, you've got to try some new things. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I alluded to the fact that it's also better in the bedroom. These effects extend to the bedroom, too. In a series of studies published in the journal Personality and Social Psychology in 2019, Amy Muse at New York University in Canada found that couples who saw their partners as sources of insight, excitement, and new experiences had more desire for sex with each other. 
many of y'all are wondering, how can I spice up my bedroom? Baby, you got to spice it up outside the bedroom first. If you don't spice it up outside the bedroom, nothing magical is going to happen mm -hmm. in the bedroom. Because I can imagine when you're when you're doing new experiences and then afterwards you're talking about how much fun you had in those experiences that those endorphins that are shared between the two of you that sparks the new excitement mm -hmm. between each of you, which later folds over into the bedroom. Yeah, I, I see. I'm able to see my wife in a new light when we get out and we try things outside our comfort zone. Uh, learn new experiences. I see a light bulb going off and sh and she's this oxytocin is released inside of her. This bonding is released. Um, when I'm able to experience new experiences with her, my dopamine is released. I like trying new things. I'm now my, my wife, God bless her heart. She can eat chicken every night if she could. Uh, but I love it when she changes up the menu. And she cooks my liver and my uh, broccoli casserole or uh, some spaghetti. She made uh, pasta from scratch the other night. Uh, I like new stuff. We all do. Nobody won't. Now, we are creatures of comfort. We mm -hmm. creatures of habit. There's some things we like, but there's also this need to introduce something new. So tonight we're going to give you maybe five things that you can do new. And then we're going to come back with uh, some more a little later. But tonight, I wanna talk about what are some new experiences that couples can do? One of the things we talked about recently, it really happened by accident. Uh, a friend of ours had a 50th birthday party at Stax Museum. Mm -hmm. Stax Museum is, of course, uh, Stax Records was at one point in time, our Motown, Memphis's mm -hmm. Motown. Mm -hmm. Isaac Hayes, David Porter, uh, Al Green, uh, Richard Pryor even uh, made a comedy album at Stax Records. It was our Motown, and I'd, I've been in Memphis since 1995 and had never ventured into Stax Museum. Mm -hmm. And I was walking around looking at Isaac Hayes' uh, $26,000 uh, Cadillac with a TV and a refrigerator from 1976 with 24- carrot gold-plated right. grill. I'm like, this is crazy. I didn't know all this was here. And my wife and I, we walked the museum, never had experienced it. And what did we conclude after going there? Well, we concluded that we needed to explore the city. We've been here for, in August, it will be 20, 29 years wow. we've been in Memphis. And so what we decided to do was put a lot of things into like a, a hat per se, of all the different things in the city that we wanted to explore mm -hmm. and then draw one out like midweek in the event that we had to prepare for it for our date night on on Vet Friday. So you can go explore your city, right? There's museums, mm -hmm. there's parks, there's historical sites, places you have not yet gone into. We need to go to uh, Elvis Presley's mansion. Yes, we do. We used to live down the street from Elvis Presley's mansion in Whitehaven. Lived there for like, what, eight years maybe? About eight years, yeah. And never went in there, never had a desire to. But after seeing Elvis Presley's movie, I said, you know what? He was a pretty cool cat. You know, I don't think he just appropriated. I think he learned something from black culture. And I, I would love to go find out more about how he lived. So my point is, explore your city. Mm -hmm. That's something you can do, right? right? To build chemistry, to build romance, to sustain romance in your marriage. Another thing we did recently is plant what? Oh, we planted a garden. Yeah, and, and it's growing. We didn't kill it. Yay. Thank you, Dr. Chris Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was important for you as a woman for your husband to follow through on your desire to plant a garden. You, I went to the store, I, I got the guy to build the, the above ground um, garden. Raised garden bed. Raised garden bed. How did, that, how did that make you feel when we initiated that project together? Well, it was so fulfilling to see you getting your hands dirty. So it's just not a project for me. It's a project for both of us and the boys have gotten involved in it as well. And knowing that we're growing something that's going to bring sustenance for us, mm -hmm. you know, in the event that, 
heaven forbid, something goes on where there's a, a food desert, but we know how to grow our own vegetables and we'll have fresh vegetables and herbs that we that I will be able to cook. I, I know it sounds very elementary what we're saying to you right now, but there is something profound about us doing this together. It took me back uh, to my grandfather and my grandmother, mm -hmm. remembering their garden in the back of my home and, and how much pride and, and, and practicality that brought to our family for survival. I remember grandmama canning vegetables. Mm -hmm. We never went hungry. We might not have had a lot of money, but we never went hungry. We always had food. We would even share our garden with relatives who were poorer than us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that did something for me. It, it, it made me see my wife in a different light. She's from the city. I'm from the country. To see her out there with her um, girly girl self, with her, she had gloves on. I'm, I'm out there, y'all, uh, with get, digging my hands in the earth. She's got, oh, I got to get my gloves. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but it was the bonding. Yes. Of us getting out there, and then we on a on a daily basis, she's like, "Did you water the garden? How's it looking?" I went out there; it looks great. Um, Jordan is pruning the tomatoes. It is a family effort, but again, it's something we decided to do new together. Another thing that Ron and I absolutely love doing, and I hope that you do it as a couple, is going on trips. Let me tell you something. Are you listening to me? Going on trips is probably the biggest aphrodisiac that you could have to take your sex life to the next level. Baby, help me un help people understand why is going on trips why do you get why do you get more horny on trips than you do just staying at home? Because the responsibility <laughs> of planning a meal or cleaning up after someone is not on me. I, although you laugh at me for still tidying up the room when we're in a hotel, but at the same token, I don't have to be concerned about keeping a whole house clean or planning a meal, taking a dog out. Mm -hmm. I can focus all of my energy on you. Hey, man, I love it. Shine on me. <laughs> I love it when you put all of your attention on me. You know, I get I got her undivided attention. She's got my mm. undivided attention. Uh, it's just something about being away out of Memphis, being away from the house, um, having other people wait on you, uh, making love on the balcony, looking at the sunset. I remember we went to Kenya one time on, and stayed on the the, the Masai Mari uh, reserve. reserve. We slept in a tent, y'all. We could hear lions. We, could, we saw elephants, uh, but the most beautiful part is when we saw that, sun, that sunrise in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We are out looking across the plains of Africa and seeing the sun like it was resting on the earth, mm -hmm. the orange embers coming up over the plains and hearing the animals and, and Rhonda just begin to weep. What was that like for you when you saw that sunset coming up in, mother, in the motherland? That was just it. We were in the motherland and experiencing something that a lot of people don't get the opportunity to experience. And especially with me being in a tent. Yeah, it was a glamping trip, but it was it was just something that was so surreal. It was just so surreal mm -hmm. seeing the sun setting and um, rising. It was just it was just phenomenal. It was, guys. But again, going on trips, whether watch this. Whether it's driving to Nashville, for those of us who live in Memphis, Nashville is three hours. Uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, or Heber Springs, Hot, what is it? Hot, Hot Springs, Springs Arkansas. Arkansas is like a few hours away. Um, Mississippi is in the other direction. Atlanta is like four or five hours. So you can jump in your car. Mm -hmm. For those of you like, well, we don't have any money, go to Africa. But you've got some money, you can go three hours away. Get your hotel room. Do something different. Make some trips. Make sure every year you plan a trip. We used to play, we had small children. We had a trip for our kids mm -hmm. and we had a trip for us. Definitely need it. it. Both of those are needed. You need time away. And there's something, like I said, it's something like an aphrodisiac. When you get away, sex is just on a whole nother level. You, we, have, we have what we call gourmet sex uh, when we go away. You know, when you're at home and you're tired, Come on, hurry up. Nobody does that. <laughs> Nobody. No, I 
<laughs> no, no budget. She doesn't do it. Uh, but we have some friends. <laughs> but listen, I'm telling you, when you get away, there's something great about that. Here's another one, sweetheart, that you all could do together. Take a class together. Mm -hmm. uh, Rhonda and I, because of our passion for educating couples around sexuality, years ago, we started taking classes at uh, the Sexual Wholeness Institute in Rich, Atlanta. Richmond University. Richmond, Richmond University in Atlanta. Uh, we got our certification as sex educators. We followed that up uh, with Amina Peterson, and we were just recently certified as sex doulas. A sex doula is a person that guides people into deeper sexual intimacy and erotic uh, consciousness. And uh, taking those classes with one another has really, when you say has enriched our, our sex oh, life? I definitely, definitely, because we're putting into practice some of, most of the things that we're learning so that we can in turn later explain to other couples on how to do it. Yeah, so whether it's a cooking class, a class on sex, a class on gardening, a class on how to uh, utilize your, your iPad, I don't care. Just take classes together. Be students. We graduated, Rhonda got her master's degree years ago. I have a doctorate, but we're students for life. For life. Uh, and, and you should always set out to learn new things. And what better way to stay together as a couple than to do things together as a couple by learning new things. So you could take classes at your church, take classes at your community centers, mm -hmm. take classes at your local universities, take classes online, but stay students. Keep learning together. Mm -hmm. One more we're going to share before we, we, we take a break uh, tonight, and that is refurbishing your home. Mm. Talk about that. How how did that project work for us in redoing some of the spaces in our home? Well, one, you know, when you when you move into a home and you you first put furniture in it, you have to constantly keep it up to date, and that doesn't mean overhauling everything. Just taking little spaces and doing something new, bringing it up to date, and that just keeps your home fresh for yourselves because you're in the home, you're living in the home and you don't want your home to be outdated and you're looking around like, oh, I got flower couches and they went out in 1978. And so that's kind of making you feel a certain kind of way mm. because your home is antiquated. But when mm. you refurbish and make new spaces and make them fresh spaces, it does something to your psyche on coming home to the ones you love. Yeah, you know, if some of y'all need some scripture to inspire you, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, Behold, I do a new thing. Mm. Do you not perceive it? It springs up amongst you. There's something exciting about new things. Yeah. And watch this. You can make a marriage, an old marriage, new. You can make your home new. Recently, we, I, I went into a living room that we never... Um, went into, you know, in, in, in black homes, there's always uh, one living room where nobody ever gets to go into, right? It's got white furniture, sometimes it's got plastic on it, and it, it's just to look at. You can't go in. I'm like, why? Why? Why do we have a living room that nobody ever goes into? I want to make it a studio. So what we did was we took our living room and we transformed it into a studio. And so now we're able to get more functionality mm -hmm. Out of our and we're doing it together. Yeah. We're doing this podcast in a place that we renovated because we wanted to do more with our home. What is what more can you bring out of your own home right now? Something y'all can do new together. How can you repurpose some of these spaces for some of y'all that are empty nesters? Maybe you need to turn uh, your son or daughter's room into your playroom. They're gonna come back and see couches and and handcuffs and uh, and and toys. <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they, like Roger said. No, I want my babies to come home. You can't take out their stuff yet. Mm -hmm. They're twenty some years old, baby. When can I have their room? <laughs> but listen, we want you to know that in order to keep romance alive in your relationship, you got to do something new. 
Nobody wants the same old, mm -hmm. same old boring vanilla sex all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, going into doing the same stuff we did 10 years ago. And so on the next episode, we're going to teach you how to spice it up, how to do some new stuff in the bedroom so that it doesn't become your boring room. Mm -hmm. All right. So stay tuned. Uh, listen, uh, we got some great stuff coming down the pike. We're Next month, we're going to be doing a Love in the Bluff retreat mm -hmm. uh, in Memphis. And we, unfortunately, it's sold out. But don't panic. We still got you. Rhonda and I are going out scouting. We're going out on a trip at the end of June to Cancun, Mexico. And we're going to an all-inclusive resort. And we're going to go and make sure it's conducive for you. We want you to go with us next year. Uh, for an all-inclusive trip. Hey, would you like that? Would you like to go on a trip with us next year to Cancun, Mexico, to an all-inclusive, very romantic spot? And so I hope that we can take them with us. Also, tell them about Eden Circle, how they can be a part of our inner circle. We have a wonderful program called Eden Circle where we have other couples that are in the program. We offer guidance, you know, through their marriage. We offer tips. We offer counseling. We do meetups. We have master classes. If this is something that sound you sound like you may want to get involved in, please go to TheEdenCircle.com. Again, that's TheEdenCircle.com and check us out there. And what ideas do you have? I, we'd like to hear from y'all. What ideas do y'all have in relation to what are some new things that couples can do to keep romance alive? I want you to email us. What's the new email? Dr. Stacy and Rhonda Spencer at gmail.com. Again, that's Dr. Stacy and Rhonda Spencer at gmail.com. D R D R S T A C Y. Yes, A N D A N D R H O N D A R H O N D A. Spencer, Spencer. S P E N C E R dot com. It's a long one, but Dr. Stacy and Rhonda Spencer dot com. At at gmail gmail dot com. com not dot com at gmail, at gmail com. jordan put that on the screen uh yeah we're gonna put that on the screen so you can email us because we want to know from you what are some ideas that we can share with our other listeners about some new things that we can do to keep romance alive stay tuned because we're coming back with part two on monday night love you guys if you have not subscribed to naked and unashamed sls what are you waiting on Go subscribe and share. Leave a comment and share with all of your other couple friends. We'll see you next time.